Now, what I'm going to talk about today relates to the polymers. I'm going to give you a brief reminder what are polymers again. So polymers are composed of macromolecules with high molecular weight and they consist of different repeat units. So have a look here, you can see that they can be composed of lots of the same repeat units, but you can also have a mixture of those. And when we're talking about synthetic polymers that have additives added to them in order to make them easier to work with, we're talking about plastics. Now, we're all aware of the plastics that we use in plastic bags, but there are many more polymers or plastics that we come into contact with in our daily life. So here I'm going to give you a brief overview of what are these polymers, a history of polymers and how they have evolved over time, and talk a bit about the problem that we all know, which is around plastic waste. Examples of polymers include your clothes, my contact lenses. And don't forget about our face masks and rubber gloves. Recent applications include the use of conductive polymers in your phone or what to think of 3D printing. So for instance, I've just 3D printed these at my home. And 2020 happens to be a very special year because it's been a hundred years since starting a first proposed structure of polymers in 1920. But even before that, people were working with polymers. It's just that we didn't understand the structure of what it was. Back in time, I think when clay and glass were the only materials that could be molded. But we all know that glass is heavy and it does break easily. The Aztecs did use natural rubber, so they used it to make balls and waterproof textiles. So this came over to Europe in the 16th century. But despite all of this and using wool and linen as garments, we didn't quite know how to modify them. So when the first industrial plastic was produced in Bakaland in 1907 in New York, Bakelite, this was really, an, really a revolution. However great these natural polymers were, they were expensive and they were very difficult to obtain. So what happened when Bakelite came on the market, all of the sudden this material was affordable, so everyone had access to it. So other advantages obviously included that it's moldable, so you could have it in whatever shape you wanted. It was lightweight and it was durable. So it had opened up a completely new market. And since polymers were first mentioned by starting in 1920, it went really fast. So notable breakthroughs, uh, were the production of polyethylene, as used in plastic bags, 1933, nylon, as we all know, 1935, and then since 1960s, polymers were used as biomaterials. 1966 was another important year when Colec discovered aramides, which you better know as Kevlar, and they're used in bulletproof vests nowadays. In recent years, there's been particular progress in the field of polymer electronics. Since the 1950s, there's been at least six Nobel Prizes in the field of polymer science. So that's tremendous. But also because these polymers are so low cost and because they're durable, so it means they last for a long time, this poses some problems. And there's been growing concerns about the increase in plastic waste. And one of the things we say is the problem is not the polymers, it's us. So what we really need to do is we need to change our behavior to either use less of the plastic or that we start looking for other uh, solutions for this, like for instance, biodegradable plastics. 